So, uh, hello everyone, I'm Nikit Turakanov. First of all, uh, I want to say that it's a great honor to me to give a talk at Hack in the Box, uh, second time in a row. And today I'm going to talk about uh, exploiting uh, previously unexploitable uh, pool corruption in Microsoft Windows kernel. Uh, so, first slide about me. You know, uh, on Twitter page I have several aliases like uh, Crazy Wild Rush and Line of Stars, but basically I'm just a nice dude. And, you know, I'm homeless independent security researcher from Russia. Now, I have kind of Russian special sense of humor. Okay, mm, so um, basically we're going to talk uh, a little bit about previous research. Uh, then, uh, to be disclosed, it's a new approach. And in the end, uh, I will talk about some conclusion and uh, question and answer section. So, um, at the moment, uh, exploitation uh, world uh, goes in the you know, direction when uh, mayor vendors uh, make, some, uh, make situation when you have to have a lot of uh, uh, you know, combination of vulnerabilities to compromise uh, bugs. For example, Google Chrome, uh, there is a sandbox, uh, Internet Explorer, there is a sandbox. So First of all, you have to bypass SLR, DEP, and then escape sandbox. Uh, and uh, actually, Microsoft Windows kernel um, hasn't uh, uh, functionality to build a uh, great sandbox. Uh, and uh, for example, GDI is a good vector for attack from a sa sandbox. Good example on la uh, last point to own, Niels and John from uh, MWR Labs, following Google Chrome, using one vulnerability in WebKit. And uh, next, uh, they attack Windows Kernel. So basically, they didn't attack uh, Chrome Sandbox. They just bypass it using some vulnerability. I think uh, at the moment there is no info about uh, in which exact component of Windows. Is it in win, uh, 32K.C? So is it in NTOS Kernel itself? But um, they tweeted uh, that uh, they uh, exploited kernel, kernel pool overflow in uh, Windows kernel. So uh, there is a, they uh, popped up calculator with system token. So uh, from untrusted, from sandbox process, they uh, gained uh, full compromise. So I think it's cool. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, I make some statistic research. And from 2008 year, I can say that um, uh, most of the um, local privilege escalation, most of the vulnerabilities in Microsoft kernel are memory corruptions. And uh, there are just a little bit of stack overflows. Most of them are pool corruptions. And uh, that's why Microsoft uh, enhances uh, security of pool locator. Uh, it starts from, uh, Microsoft uh, started from Windows 7 because uh, till Windows 7, uh, pool locator was uh, pretty vulnerable to easiest attack. And uh, in Windows 8, uh, pool locator is uh, kind of bulletproof. But there are still uh, attacks again. So uh, there is a really good research out there about uh, pool locator mechanisms. And uh, in my opinion, the most uh, Comprehensive one is by Tarji Mand. And uh, by the way, I, um, I was in Black Hat in March, and Jen uh, Eric Liu uh, talked about uh, some nice uh, techniques to manipulate uh, heap and pool uh, very precisely to make uh, pool to appropriate state to, for exploitation on Windows 8. So we start with some basics. Uh, basically, uh, a kernel pool is just a heap button uh, uh, kernel land. I'm really I'm curious why uh, Microsoft uh, calls it a pool. Actually, it's heap, but okay, pool. Um, the, uh, the major uh, difference between user land heap uh, is that uh, there are uh, different types of memories. Uh, there are non-paged pool, paged pool, session pool, uh, and um, each pool described by uh, structure, uh, the, they are stored in the in defining 
in tuple vector array. So uh, here is a uh, just a output from debugger. There are a lot of fields in the descriptor of pool, but uh, the most interesting one uh, is uh, are list heads and pen and freeze. So uh, list heads is just an uh, array of uh, double linked lists of free chunks of the same size. Because uh, there is a, a 512 uh, entries uh, and the granularity is 8 bytes, uh, so list heads. Uh, store uh, chunks from uh, 8 byte to uh, close to page size is uh, 4080 bytes. So um, to describe uh, allocated memory, there is a pool header uh, structure, and there is a field which uh, previous size, pool index, block size, pool type, pool tag. Uh, they describe uh, just the size of current of previous uh, chunks. Also, pool index um, uh, stores the uh, index of pool, where is the chunk resides. Uh, actually, pool header on uh, 32 bits and 64 bits, uh, not the same, but uh, the only difference is uh, that on uh, 64 bits, there is a pointer to process. And because uh, uh, it's uh, 64 bits, uh, granularity uh, a little bit uh, bigger. So if uh, on uh, 32 bytes, uh, 32 bits um, operating system granularity is uh, 8 bytes, on uh, 64, uh, 64 bits operating system granularity is um, 16. So um, when the chunk is uh, free, is freed, uh, after the pull header, there's a list entry. Basically, it's just structure uh, that uh, stores uh, a pointer to forward chunk, to forward free chunk, and to backward. So um, this is how it uh, looks like in graphic mode. Uh, and um, uh, basically, because uh, 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 kernel pool uh, was made, uh, uh, there are a lot of algorithms and uh, for small allocations, there is a different list uh, called the uh, Lucaside. And for small uh, allocations, uh, there is a um, Lucaside. Uh, there are Lucaside lists, and they stored and defined in process control block. And um, the maximum size is uh, 256 bytes. So, and uh, there is change. Um, there is a single list. Look aside, uh, is a single list, and uh, list heads are uh, double link lists. So, so in graphic, uh, you see that there is only a pointer to next one. So there is uh, no pointer to backward uh, chunk. So for great allocations that are bigger uh, uh, than uh, page size, uh, there is a, a, me a mechanisms. Uh, for allocating uh, pages, uh, and there is a special, uh, I think it's, it was done for performance reasons. Uh, if um, there are lists for one page allocation, uh, two page and three page. If, there, uh, if a bigger allocation is requested, uh, there is a, a bitmap uh, which uh, describes uh, which page is allocated, which is free, and so on. So uh, basically, uh, there are a lot of functions to allocate memory in kernel land, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, they uh, all invoke x allocate pool with stack. So it's kind of uh, uh, one and only interface of allocating memory. Uh, and uh, basic algorithm uh, uh, returns uh, Free ch new chunk. Uh, firstly, uh, it uh, looks for lookaside list, then li uh, list heads, and pool page locator. By the way, uh, for example, in uh, some manipulation techniques, uh, there is a technique to to store a lot of chunks in lookaside lists, and um, uh, allocation algorithm works in this way. If uh, lookaside lists are full. Uh, it uh, returns a free chunk from list heads. 
So uh, there is, is, this is just the order of uh, location. Uh, then one of the key points of this research is that uh, kernel pool allocator allocates uh, first uh, chunk uh, at the top and uh, secondary and uh, following allocation uh, from the bottom. And uh, a chunk header of uh, first allocation has previous size, uh, which is zero. Uh, it, it will result in some cool stuff, which I will disclose a little bit later. So uh, when uh, uh, you have to free some uh, memory, there is uh, also a lot of uh, functions to free, but in the end they call x free pool with tag. And um, basically, x free pool with tag returns a chunk header to appropriate list. And uh, there is uh, also one of the key points of uh, techniques that uh, if uh, adjacent blocks are also free, uh, alloc allocator merge, uh, also it's called coalescence. Uh, free chunks to reduce fragmentation. So, for example, in this situation, if uh, there is a, a free chunk, next is busy, and uh, next is also free. When um, you free busy chunk, uh, allocation algorithm looks if uh, adjacent blocks are, f are also free, and uh, allocation algorithm merges it to bigger and bigger. So, in the end, uh, we get uh, just one uh, big free chunk. So, uh, talking about uh, previous research, there are, um, first one uh, is uh, from uh, XCon conference in 2005. Uh, next uh, was in CISCAN, uh, the most comprehensive, in my opinion, from Targimant, and the newest one at Black Hat. Uh, actually, you know, I'm really curious because uh, uh, each research is focused on attacking pool locator itself. And um, for example, after Tarji Mant uh, at the Black Hat DC uh, talked about uh, some cool uh, flaws about cool attacks uh, versus allocator on Windows 7, uh, Microsoft uh, security engineers from Microsoft, uh, I think uh, they read uh, his slides, and they just simply eliminated all his techniques. And uh, in the um, 2012, uh, he discovered uh, just two more techniques. So uh, alloca pool allocator is uh, really, at the moment, kind of bulletproof. So talking about uh, early days uh, b before Windows 7, it was in 2008. Um, uh, research made by Kosti Karczynski was about uh, creating fake entries, and uh, it, will, it leads to um, write four primitive or write eight primitive it, uh, when you control uh, pointer and when you control data. So there is uh, uh, several scenarios I just uh, show. Uh, one. So uh, basically, it, it turned uh, it based on uh, how uh, entry uh, is uh, removed from double single double linked list. So if you control uh, some uh, entry, it turns that uh, you control uh, override uh, of uh, arbitrary memory. So basically, in kernel, it uh, results in a compromise. So this is an example of uh, exploiting using fake entry. So um, if there is a chunk, uh, there is an overflow, there is a next header, and we change uh, header of uh, next chunk. Uh, we change, for example, previous size or block size, and it uh, results that uh, pool allocator uh, thinks that there is uh, also fake header which uh, actually our uh, we uh, constructed, and um, it turns that uh, when the next header is freed, 
there is a merge and uh, we get uh, right four primitives. So we can uh, overwrite uh, arbitrary memory, which is full bunch. So um, this, uh, this uh, techniques, uh, you know, uh, there are about uh, variations of uh, that technique. Uh, and in Windows 7, uh, uh, this, uh, this technique was partially eliminated because uh, in, in Windows 7, Microsoft uh, implemented uh, safe, safe unlinking. Uh, so um, in 2012, in 2011, uh, Tarji discovered uh, that uh, uh, Microsoft uh, implemented uh, safe unlinking uh, in not so secure way. Uh, there are um, f about five techniques. Uh, for example, list entry of link override, uh, he discovered that uh, Microsoft um, checks only backward link. So if you control forward link, uh, it leads to arbitrary pull override. Next, uh, there are some techniques from him, but uh, I I'm not going to describe them. Uh, you can uh, check his slides. Uh, I want to say that um, uh, all these uh, techniques um, lead to write four primitive and uh, they attack uh, pool allocator metadata. So, for example, uh, pool index overwrite, uh, there is a um, technique to overwrite index and uh, it leads to pool index out of bounds condition and, uh, had, uh, and write four primitive in the end. So, uh, uh, Microsoft uh, security engineers from Microsoft have done a really great job in Windows 8. There are a lot of mitigations, and uh, they basically, I, I, I hope they read uh, his slides and uh, eliminated all previous techniques. So, Tarji uh, made a great job on, on Windows 8 and discovered uh, just uh, a little bit more techniques. Um, for example, block size attack. Uh, he, uh, if we have a vulnerability uh, where the, we control uh, our flown data very precisely, we can uh, overwrite block size to bigger value, for example. And um, as I told before, there is some uh, a trick if uh, uh, we overwrite uh, chunk header at the bottom of the page, uh, there are no checks of uh, some metadata, for example, block size and previous size. So um, basically, I can show it on uh, graphical mode. So for example, uh, we have uh, four chunks that uh, uh, fill the page. And uh, there is an overflow. We change uh, a block size of chunk header uh, to fill it to the rest of the page and free it. So basically, uh, we full pull locator that uh, he thinks that there is no chunk here. And uh, when we allocate bigger size, it uh, returns bigger chunk. And uh, for example, uh, we can uh, reallocate this uh, freed memory, uh, this freed memory by uh, something which is uh, controllable, like Unicode strings. And uh, it turns uh, that uh, we overwrite uh, content of, of this chunk. So uh, basically, uh, it leads to arbitrary memory corruption. So uh, uh, why I, uh, you know, talking here? Because uh, to attack a kernel, uh, kernel pool locator with, uh, for example, this technique, by the way, uh, split chunk attack, it's kind of a uh, variation of block size attack. So I just uh, skip it. Uh, to exploit uh, such vulnerabilities, uh, you have uh, to have uh, al almost full control over, over overflown data. And uh, my experience uh, shows that there are a lot of vulnerabilities when you uh, haven't control of overflown data or whereas overflown data is constant. 
So uh, you haven't a chance to uh, construct a fake uh, pool header with bigger block size, so it doesn't work simply. And uh, basically, all research uh, against uh, about uh, exploitation pool corruptions is about uh, describing some tricks in pool allocation, in pool locator, in pool locator mechanism, and so on. So, and uh, on Windows 8, uh, it's uh, very hard to exploit some vulnerabilities uh, in a reliable way. So, uh, you know, I dissect uh, vulnerabilities, uh, pool corruptions, in two groups, which are sweet, of, uh, which you can uh, exploit using public techniques like of Tarji or, uh, or techniques by Costa, and uh, there are hardcore vulnerabilities. And uh, you haven't, you simply haven't chance to exploit hardcore vulnerabilities using public techniques. So, just examples. Uh, I have uh, discovered a lot of vulnerabilities with uh, these types when you, uh, when overflow on data is, uh, is uncontrolled or there is a mem set with zeros or with some constant and uh, there is no way to construct a, a fake header in a correct way to apply some of the public techniques. So uh, I was thinking about, uh, uh, I imagined a situation, what if a pool locator is bulletproof? What if uh, there is no attack, there is no technique against metadata? So is, uh, what if a uh, current pool locator is totally bulletproof? Uh, basically, uh, this technique uh, came from user land, because uh, uh, in user land, uh, nowadays, uh, Exploit writers uh, use contents of memory, for example, how, uh, how exploit writers uh, bypass ASLR these days. They use objects, so they uh, overwrite content of some uh, uh, JavaScript and so on object. And um, I was uh, researching, uh, so what we can uh, overwrite in kernel. Of course, kernel has objects. For example, uh, registry objects, file objects, LPC, ALPC, semaphore objects. There are a lot of types. So uh, to describe objects, there are headers. And there is an object manager in Windows, which is kind of a uh, big part of Windows kernel itself. And uh, basically, this technique uh, is based on Direct kernel object manipulation, which is uh, uh, most, uh, which is known uh, for a long time, but in rootkit world, not in exploitation. So, uh, actually, I, I'm curious why uh, at the moment there is uh, no uh, research uh, using uh, rootkit uh, techniques in exploitation field. So, uh, there is a definition of object header from WRK um, to show you the most interesting ones. So uh, there are types of objects. Uh, so uh, basically when you allocate kernel objects uh, after chunk header, so after uh, metadata of uh, pool, pool allocator, there is an object header and after object header there is a body, so actual contents of objects. Uh, this structure um, uh, changed a little bit in, uh, since, w since Windows Vista, but um, it just, uh, uh, there is a pointer to type, and on Windows 8, on Windows Vista, on Windows 7, there is an index to array of object types elements. So object type describes uh, some uh, things, but the most interesting one is uh, object type initializer structure which uh, holds pointers. And yeah, I just uh, show that on different uh, operating systems. Uh, basically, object manager um, is the same since NT4 uh, till Windows 8. Uh, I mean, 
algorithms. Uh, there are a lot of new objects in the Windows Vista, and Windows 7, and Windows 8, but algorithms structures are pretty same. There are just uh, a little, a little bit changes between uh, newest versions. So, uh, object type initializer structure holds uh, pr uh, pointers to procedures. For example, for open uh, object, for deleting object, for parsing, blah blah blah. Uh, there is an example, um, uh, just they uh, look the same, they look the same. Uh, there is an example of uh, LPC object type, so there is a pointers to some uh, functions like open procedures uh, is a LPC open port, closed procedure is a LPC closed port, and so on. So the funny thing is that um, uh, array uh, that uh, holds uh, pointers to object type uh, elements um, starts from from the third. So, uh, first element and second element are kind of uh, uh, kind of magic. First element is zero, and uh, second uh, element is uh, has value bedo bobo, which is my magic value at the moment. <laughs> and uh, on the 64 bits operating system, mm, uh, this constant uh, are extended by zeros. So uh, uh, on the 64 bits operating system, uh, second element uh, re resides in, in user land address space. So what, uh, how we can uh, use it in uh, exploitation? Uh, we can smash object header call special syscall, which uh, triggers actually uh, the, some of the procedures, and this leads to hijack of control flow. So uh, we gain just uh, control of EIP or RIP register. So um, in steps, uh, first of all, we spray pool with uh, objects, uh, depending on uh, what vulnerability we exploit. Uh, for example, if it's not paged, uh, pool, we spray uh, objects that are uh, allocated uh, in non-paged. If paged, uh, we use object that uh, allocated in paged pool. And then we fragment, uh, also massaging, uh, pen shoeing pool. Um, basically, we make holes at the bottom of the page. Uh, it's uh, to predict uh, where allocation will take place. Then we trigger actually vulnerability, our flow, corruption. Because uh, we make holes at the bottom of the page, when the uh, overflow chunk is freed, uh, there will be no blue screen of death, because there are no checks of metadata. So we can uh, free overflow chunk and uh, work uh, next call, uh, syscalls, whatever. So basically, there are a lot of procedures like open, dump, close, uh, query security, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but funny thing, uh, the, uh, I discovered that uh, uh, there is a one <laughs> special system call because uh, in the name uh, there is a security, anti-query security objects, but uh, in fact it turns uh, that uh, we gain uh, control of an EIP register, so it's not so secure. Basically, uh, when we overflow uh, object header uh, and Next, uh, call this uh, system call. Uh, after object reference object by handle, we get uh, memory of uh, pointer to memory where the object is located, because the uh, header uh, uh, is located uh, before object, so there is a minus. Uh, here's a yax, actually it's a type index uh, value, then it dereference, and in the end, we get call EDX. So uh, we get uh, control of EIP or RIP. So uh, all these techniques are based on uh, this array, because uh, this array holds um, information about all kernel ob object types. So and in this array, there are some interesting uh, things. Uh, basically, index is uh, one byte, but uh, 
if you can uh, see, uh, there are object types, and uh, this array uh, is, uh, has zero values. So if you overflow uh, type index with uh, some uh, value which is uh, out of bounds of this array, you can get null pointer the reference. And uh, by calling anti-query security object, you gain control of execution flow. But uh, the thing is, is as you know, um, uh, on Windows 7, you can't uh, allocate Windows 8. Uh, so this technique, uh, using z out of bounds, using uh, zero, uh, null values, it works uh, till Windows 8. But actually, I, wo uh, I woke up today and see picture that Microsoft uh, backported uh, this restriction from Windows 8 to Windows 7. So basically, Microsoft eliminated uh, this technique. But I'm not mad, actually, because there is a special uh, value, which is bad bobo, and uh, it uh, locates at, uh, at second uh, value in uh, array. Um, Basically, this uh, magic constant uh, um, is from NT4 to your uh, leaked version on the win of Windows Blue. I checked uh, leaked ver uh, kernel of leaked version of Windows Blue, and this code is still there. So, actually, I don't know why Microsoft chose this constant, because uh, it you can spray uh, memory. Uh, to achieve this address. Uh, I don't know why. And uh, on 64-bit operating system, the uh, uh, station is even worse, because uh, this constant extended by zeros, and you simply can allocate uh, memory, uh, allocate uh, in user land, uh, make fake object type entry, and gain execution. But on the other hand, uh, I hope uh, Microsoft will implement SMAP in Windows Blue. SMAP will um, eliminate this technique on 64 bits. But on 32 bits, uh, it's, it will still work, because uh, SMAP uh, will not help if uh, uh, memory is uh, in kernel. So this is just a uh, disaster of uh, a function. So basically, there is a, just one prerequisite to apply this technique. You have to have uh, value one uh, in uh, overflown data. And uh, you smash uh, type index with value one, which is kind of special, uh, bot bo bo, uh, spray memory, and gain code, code ex execution. So what if uh, the you haven't this value in uh, overflow data. Uh, so you have to find some another solution. And uh, for example, uh, security procedures um, of uh, different objects uh, are different. So for example, for file, the security procedure is uh, IOP get security object. Um, of uh, registry key, it's CMP security method. And um, basically, we can full kernel. Uh, we can overwrite uh, type index of uh, registry key to file. And this will lead to uh, some uh, vulnerabilities, uh, some of memory corruptions in uh, legitimate code. So because uh, CMP security method uh, thinks that uh, it dispatches registry object, but we can uh, forge their fake object. And um, so object type confusion, uh, we can uh, change type and date of kernel object. Uh, this uh, will lead uh, to re redirect of execution flow. And um, uh, we can achieve write for primitive. But uh, object type confusion uh, 
has prerequisite that uh, to achieve that we have uh, uh, good control of our phone data because uh, uh, in uh, functions that uh, dispatch kernel objects, kernel objects it, uh, are you know big structures with uh, with uh, a lot of fields, and uh, in some situation, uh, for example, if uh, we smash some uh, fields of object with zeros, there will be no pointer the reference and there will be blue screen of death. So uh, it's kind of uh, hard technique to, to implement. So um, basically, Microsoft, uh, you know, totally forgot about another vector. Uh, Microsoft enhances pool locator mechanisms, but totally forgot about object manager, uh, object headers, and there is there is no you know uh, security checks. There is no cookie and object header, uh, but uh, you know, kind of uh, SMAP will eliminate some of these techniques. But uh, actually, I think that uh, even implementing cookie and object header uh, will not change uh, situation a lot. Because uh, if we um, if we take a look at uh, iOS, Apple iOS, or Linux. Uh, uh, there are exploit writers use several vulnerabilities, for example, information leakage to leak uh, value of cookie and then implement some of the techniques. So, but basically, Microsoft should implement cookie to, to eliminate uh, these very easy techniques. So, any questions? Anyone have any questions for Nikita? It's scary to be the first question after such a... <laughs> um, so that structure of uh, uh, objects allocated in chunks yep. together with their constructor, destructor, this is essentially uh, the KMEM or the slab allocator, right? Well, it, kind of. It's so, uh, you know, Linux has that, Solaris has that, Solaris has, has a lot of that because they are sort of the object-oriented kernel. So would you say that uh, the entire idea of storing objects with their V tables and, uh, you know, ops methods is a bad thing? Yeah, well, actually, I haven't tested, but this idea should work on every operating system. Right, because uh, there are uh, there are uh, almost I, I think almost uh, operating system use uh, kernel objects. So, uh, but it depends on uh, some tricks because to apply uh, um, uh, to not trigger blue screen, uh, uh, there is a trick in a Windows kernel. Uh, we have to make a, a hole to predict uh, that allocation will take place at the bottom. So if we uh, Forge, uh, if we construct a um, page in such a way that allocation will take place uh, in the middle or in the top, there will be blue screen. Mm. So uh, actually, you know, uh, this idea should work on every operating system, but uh, implementation, um, uh, you know, depends on allocator mechanisms of right, operating right. systems. Generally, your, I mean, I, I interpret your uh, fix recommendation as saying uh, whenever you allocate objects, uh, uh, put in some extra context, uh, just like uh, cookies or yep. object headers or anything like that. Without that, any slab-based memory allocation, any KMEM, any VMEM memory allocation uh, would be susceptible to this. So, uh, yep. so what's the question, sorry? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, will cookies help? Uh, well, it just a little bit. Oh. Well, yeah, you know, uh, if you set, uh, basically, I have another, you know, uh, reset uh, to change this value, bad bobo, to something uh, like on the top of other space, like FFFFF. Because uh, basically, if you take a look of uh, contents of uh, this array, uh, there are zeros, so uh, zero, zeros you can't allocate a null page on Windows 8. And if Microsoft 
changes bad bobo constant, uh, it will uh, this idea will uh, die. So, uh, but uh, cookie will help a little bit, in my opinion. But uh, and Microsoft should uh, change this magic value. Thank you. Any other questions? No? All right, well, Nikita, thank you very much for your talk. Yeah.